Odakaram Muragayan was startled and stunned hearing his wife's cry. Again looking at her and gesturing with his hand, Girl! What are you thinking? Are you crazy? He said. I am not mad at all. You are mad, your father is mad, your father is mad. Do you not recognize him? Do you not know who is the warrior who conquered Elam and chased King Mahinda to the hill country? Do you recognize the penitent son who saved the emperor's sons, the apple of the eyes of the people of Chola, as Kaveritai? Can't you see? Then why did you set out with him? Where did you set out to go? Rakamal said. The prince now interrupted and said, Lady! You have mistaken me for who I am. I am a merchant from Esla land. I am the one who took this man with me to show him the way. Take him with you. Do not shout in vain!" said. While this talk was going on, people gathered around them. The crowd was increasing by the minute. Everyone who came stared at the prince. Then Rakamal said in a still louder voice, Ah! Goddess! Is this a delusion of the goddess Selvara? Did you lose your memory when you drowned in the sea? Or did those sinful Buddhist bhikkhus cast a spell on themselves to make you think you were someone else? Or, alas! Is it so? They will die and go to their homes. Has anyone come and entered Tyrumana who knows the tricks of nesting and nesting? That cannot be so. Come again. Think carefully. You are not a merchant. You are the return of Emperor Sundarachola. Born to rule the world under the shadow of an umbrella. If in doubt, look carefully at their palms. There are conch wheel lines. She shouted. Immediately Prince Arulmas Hivarma closed both his hands tightly. Woman! Won't you just shut up? After saying that, he looked at Muragayan and said, What trouble is this? Can't you stop her shouting? He asked. Muragayan came near his wife and said, Rakama! May you go well! Don't talk! The prince wants to go to Tanjavur in the guise of a merchant. He said. Sinful son! Shouldn't you have said this earlier? Did you say that there would never be a prince in the Buddhist monastery? You have remained with that wisdom. Alas! What a crime I have committed! I am overwhelmed by the abundance of desire. The sinful avengers are waiting for the time to take revenge by imprisoning themselves. Knowing that, I have exposed myself like this. Prince! But don't you fear! Palyavatarayas can't harm an atom in their thyrumini. Locks of people like me and my husband are ready to stand by their party and defend themselves!" She said. Immediately, looking at the large crowd standing around him, he said, You all approve of what I have said. Don't you? Are there any of you members of the Pulvatere party? If so, they come forward like this. Kill me first and then think of harming the prince, she screamed. The people, who had been watching and listening in uncontainable amazement until then, shouted, Long live the hero of Pawnee! Long live the brave warrior of Elam! They raised a big slogan. After hearing that, many more people gathered there. Among those who came there was one of the headmen of Nagaipatanam city. He withdrew from the crowd and came forward and said, Komakan! We heard that you were coming from the Sudamani Vihara of this city. We did not believe that rumor, but now we know the truth. The great storm that hit this city yesterday caused so much destruction in this city. But they got out of the Buddha Vihara safely, forgetting all the ravages of the storm. We leave. It is the blessing of this city that they have set foot in this city. He said that. The prince saw that it was no use trying to hide himself any longer. Sir! I thank you very much for your love, and the love of this city Mandar delights me. But I must hurry to Tanjavur on a very important business. I have set out in the guise of a merchant so that my journey may not be interrupted. Give me leave! said. Then a voice came from the crowd. No, no. The prince should stay here for at least one day and leave after receiving the hospitality of us poor people, Akaral said loudly. A thousand and one more voices followed it, no way. 
the prince must stay here for a day and rest. They shouted. The leader of No. Bireya then said, Come again. Have you seen the love and enthusiasm of the people of my city? They should accept our hospitality and perhaps leave as our guests. Have we not done the blessing that the Buddhist pictures did? Yesterday, the mandars of this city suspected that the Buddhist pictures were hiding them and tried to demolish the Sudamani Vihara and bury it with dust. At that time the storm had come. The storm had done what we had failed to do. The Vihara had crumbled to dust. He said that. Hearing this, the prince said, Sir. You are not correct in blaming the Buddhist pictures. The pictures kept me in the Buddha Vihara because of my request. They saved me from the rope of Yama's affection after I was begging for my life. My heart is pained to hear that the Sudamani Vihara has fallen. It is my duty to rebuild it. Said. Aha. We didn't know about all this before. Now that we know, we'll rebuild the Sudamani Vihara ourselves. Prince. Perhaps you should just be our guest and go away. Said the leader of Numpiraya. Yes, yes. The voices of tens of thousands of people echoed. Prince. We can remedy the delay caused by your stay here. You have set out on foot. All the Chola country roads are blocked due to stormy rains. All the rivers are in full flood. When will you go on foot and join us? We will put ourselves on elephants and send them in procession. We will all come with them and bring them to Tanjavur. Said the leader of Numpiraya. As he spoke, the crowd grew larger. Something has gone wrong, thought the prince, the secret is out. Rakamal screamed stupidly and revealed. Was it revealed out of ignorance? Or was there some other motive? In any case, it is impossible to leave this city immediately after defying the love of the people. So they will suffer. Besides, the intended purpose is further failed. We have to pacify them till noon and leave. It is also comforting to give some comfort to those who suffered losses due to the storm. Aha! Did the younger Brad Kundave say that if I reveal myself now, it will cause confusion in the country? How real is that word? There is no one in this world as knowledgeable as me. Are you talking about Tanjore throne right? In fact, shouldn't Kundava Devi be placed on the throne? While Pani Selvar was thinking like this, he saw that the crowd was getting bigger and bigger. He knew that their happiness was also growing. People seemed to have completely forgotten the horrors of the storm and the damage caused by the storm. From somewhere, elephants, horses, civicas, shrines, flags, bells, trumpets and other instruments came and joined. The prince decided to stay here for at least half a day and leave. Looking at the leader of the Enbiraya, he said, Sir. I don't want to leave, ignoring the love of so many people. I will stay here till afternoon and leave in the evening. Will you give me permission for that? Said. When the news spread that the prince had agreed to stay, the excitement of the crowd reached its limit. They started adopting ways of expressing joy. The instruments started playing. Knives games, catchy games, Kuravake Kutu etc. started in the streets here and there. Passing through the people and their merry games, it was very difficult to get to the Nagapadanath Chola house. Somehow they got together in the end. The prince could not rest even for a short time inside the palace. Because the news of him spread to all the neighboring villages. People were coming in droves. They expressed their desire to see the prince. The prince also frequently went out among the multitudes and inquired about their welfare. He inquired sympathetically about the hardships and losses caused by the storm. He said that as soon as he went to Tanjavur, he would make arrangements for redressal of the hardships suffered by the people. He also found that people were not very enthusiastic about it. People said to each other, will there be an end to the power of the vassals? When he spoke, it fell into his ear. Many people talked about the health of the emperor and about the next person to the throne in a low voice, but so that the prince could hear. In the meantime, the officials of the Nagaipatanam cities Amparankolu and the leaders of Enbiraya Am all came and joined. 
Elaborate arrangements were made to entertain the prince. Arrangements were also made to feed the people who came to see the prince. All the grain that was left in the city came and piled up because of the loss due to the storm. No worries about the curry. Can you prepare a feast for one lakh people with banana bunches from fallen banana trees and coconut bunches from fallen coconut trees? The feasts were over and it was almost time to leave. The prince came to the grand front of the Chola Palace and stood with folded hands. All was ready for a great procession in the street. A decorated elephant stopped for the prince to mount. Horses, bulls etc. stood in front and behind. Pilgrims, flag bearers and musicians of various kinds stood in procession. People stood as far as the eye could see, cheering like the raging sea last evening. The prince looked radiant with a smiling face. There was a great deal of pain inside him. His soul throbbed to know the fate of the Queen of Elam who had attracted his love ten times more than that of his birth mother. Murugayan thought that he could get some more details from his wife. She disappeared in the crowd. Only Murugayan followed the prince and arrived at the Chola Palace. He also does not know what happened to his wife or camel. On the other hand, another concern gripped the prince. The enemies were saying earlier that they wanted to take over the kingdom against the emperor's will. Could it be that their claims are true because of the demonstrations these people are making? It seems to the prince that somehow he can escape from the love circle of these city mantras. In this situation, another unexpected incident happened to him. As the prince bowed as if to bid farewell to the people, the officers of the Ampiran group and the leaders of the Enbiraya stood at the door of the palace keeping the crowd away. As it happened according to the progress, for a few minutes, hundreds of instruments such as bells, trumpets, etc., drowned out the sound of the sea. All of a sudden the instruments stopped, and the crowd fell silent. At that time, one of the city leaders, who looked like an old man, stood on the moon platform at the front door of the mansion and said in a majestic voice, So who is the next rightful candidate for the title? You are the son of the Chola country who did penance, the rich man saved by Kaveri's mother, the heroic warrior who won Elam, people. Is what I have said agreeable to all of you? Asked the old man, looking at the people standing around him, and a shuddering noise arose from the crowd, Yes, yes, that is our opinion. Said ten thousand voices. And then they chanted. So many chants came together in an indiscernible noise. A tremendous uproar rose up from the crowd to tremble in all directions, yes, yes, that is our opinion, said ten thousand voices. It was followed by chanting. So many slogans together made a huge noise that was not heard. A tremendous uproar rose up from the crowd to tremble in all directions, yes, yes, that is our opinion, said ten thousand voices. It was followed by chanting. So many slogans together made a huge noise that was not heard. The prince's lips began to move in reply, and the clamor died down as if restrained by some magical power. Sir! I am happy to see the love you all have for me. But the way you show that love is not proper? You seem to have forgotten that my dear father, Emperor Sundara Chola is still alive. You should join me in praying that may the emperor live long. Why think about who will succeed him when the emperor is alive? The old man, the first leader of the city leaders, has the correct answer to the prince's question. Pawnee's wealth. In the Chola country, while a king is still alive, it has been a long-standing custom to determine who will be next in line to the throne. Did not Maha Parantaka Chakraborty, the warrior of Madurai and the one who carved the gold crown for Thilayam Palatud Temple, in his own time, formalize those who should succeed him? Accordingly, his father ascended the throne. Said. Yes, yes. So even now the emperor must decide who deserves the next title? It's not the right time for you and me to think and talk about it. Said the prince. Pawnee's wealth. We agree that the emperor has that right. It would be fine if the emperor could decide independently. At present the emperor is imprisoned or not in the fort of Tanjore by the Palyavatarayas. Prince. Besides, 
many of us are in doubt as to whether the emperor is alive. Come with them to Tanjor and settle that doubt. We wish to take it. If luckily the emperor is in good health, we will convey our wishes to him. We will apply to ascend the throne after him. Then, let the emperor do as he decides. The elder's words, doubting whether the emperor was alive, struck a great terror in the prince's heart. Pain and panic that he had not known all these days. There was a confusion as if some danger to the emperor's life was approaching and he was at an unstoppable distance. I also remembered the story of the Queen of Elam being forcibly taken away by some murkers. There was a rush to reach Tanjore without a moment's delay. In a few seconds the prince decided what he had to do. There is no point in arguing with them. Travel is delayed. Now if they say they have agreed to talk and leave, they can find other ways to go along the way. Sir. I do not stand in the way of your wishes. What they have said about the emperor has increased my anxiety to visit him. I must leave at once. If you also wish to visit the emperor, please come with me. Let us all listen to what the emperor says about the right of title. Said. After a while, the prince rode on an elephant. A huge procession consisting of thousands of people left for Tanjore. The procession with the prince was getting bigger and bigger.